Have you ever noticed how those campaigns led by the toiletries, cosmetic and diet industries make you want to feel bad so then you'll buy stuff? Also, it's somehow taboo to acknowledge the fact that the majority of this disproportionate adulation shout on celebrities merely for the way they look is done so by the female of the species. Am I allowed to say that? Well, if we're talking of the elephant in the room, why is it when you get companies like Dove who proclaim women to be beautiful with all shapes and sizes? They'll do so on one hand, but in order to get there, on the other hand, it's never a surprise to see them knocking down the men. A bit of makeup can help somebody feel good about themselves, but those who spend a big chunk of their time on cosmetics can seem somewhat engrossed in their appearance to the outside world. That film, American Psycho, you know, the one with Christian Bale as the protagonist, he too has such a ritual concerned with portraying a persona to people with whom he just wants to fit in. in. What is it with that Newcastle bird, Cheryl Cole, with an advertising career showing us all how to look good, only to end up applying a heavy shiner to a toilet attendant, simply because Cheryl felt entitled to a complimentary lollipop? So worth it. Lily Zant Festo. On the subject of girls allowed to take the law into their own hands, Lauren Luke is another Geordie bird with her fist in the cookie jar. On this occasion, Lauren's chipped in to tell us all what is and isn't violence, specifically domestic violence. Oh, and another thing, but only when it's women and children. Did I know domestic violence was such a huge problem? No, I didn't. I was absolutely gobsmacked to read the statistics. One in four women are affected by it. Um, it doesn't just affect young women, it can affect teenagers too. It's not just physical abuse, it could be um, emotional, psychological and financial as well. Basically, if a woman has to change her behaviour around her partner, she is experiencing domestic violence. In the United States of America right now, their government have been pushing out the Violence Against Women Act, where they work hand in hand with celebrities to tell men to man up, or I mean step up, where they see violence where it's against women. Hey everybody, listen up. Listen up guys. Hey guys, listen, listen up. up. No one should ever hit a woman. It's up to each of us, because even one The worst abuse of power is when a man raises his hand to hurt a woman. We all have to take responsibility. So if you see someone threatening a woman, step up, speak out. Because one, one is too many. Meanwhile, on the other side of the pond, Britain, United Kingdom, does not have the law known in France as a duty to rescue. A famous example in practice is when the paparazzi at the scene of Lady Diana's fatal car accident were investigated for a violation of the French law known as deliberately failing to provide assistance to a person in danger. Hmm, curious how that law could have made difficult any photographic evidence they might have obtained. Moving on. One argument other countries might have for not having a duty to rescue is that the person with said duty to intervene may find it very difficult to ascertain whether or not they are putting themselves in danger. In addition to their interpretation at the time of the events, any lack of expertise or know-how on their part could lead them to make the situation even worse accidentally. And do they even know the dynamic of the situation going on here? Now, add to this a third party with violence in the case of an attack, and the person obligated by law could find themselves inadvertently made disposable as their intervention ultimately becomes their unfortunate demise. And combined with this hysteria over date rape, date violence, women facing violence from people they know and trust, rape children laws make possible trigger-happy reporting even from a mobile app, putting at risk and demonising men further entrenching their disposability, robbing Peter to pay Pauline, but campaigns like Barwa don't see it that way. As far as they're concerned, if it is a man hitting a woman, it is a crime. And by extension, what with you being a man, you are responsible for it. You, the average Joe, specifically because you are a man, are to be accountable for the responsibility of somebody else's situation, even when you don't have the full picture. The fact that it's violence against women seems to be reason enough for them. It doesn't matter how it started, or if this man who appears to be attacking her is actually defending himself against this woman who, for all you know, attacked him before you came round the corner a few moments ago. But you're not here to ask us questions, you're just here to shut up, then man up. It's what the doctor ordered. Dr. Phil, he's not, not okay, okay with, a, with man a man hitting a woman. woman. And, and this, this self-defense self theory? There, there is, is no theory for hitting a woman. woman. You, you got, got two feet. feet. If you're getting beat up by a woman, run away. Call, Call the, the police. police. Get Put something, something between, between you and her. And her. But, but you, you do not attack a woman. woman. You, you just don't, don't do it. it. Yes, Dr. Phil seems to be confusing the word attack and defend there. If a man hits a woman back merely to defend himself, 
he is not attacking her. Dr. Phil, just to demonstrate that your words are those of a reprehensible bastard, I have enclosed a video of you spewing these falsehoods in other videos of women attacking men. Men who have tried to get out in various ways but have failed because the attacks are vicious. In fact, I can even show you a demonstration in the bottom right hand corner of the screen where the young woman grabs that man's groin and he doesn't like it. Oh, but the man on the top right hand corner of the screen. Let me guess, perhaps he could have called the police for a nice little chat when that woman was stepping on his arm and kicking him in the face. Perhaps he could have called you as well, Dr. Phil. Look at these study statistics. To add insult to injury, women are more likely to use a compass, use a weapon, and the element of surprise. Though I'm not surprised when I hear Erin Pitsy, the woman who opened the world's first domestic violence shelter, state that the worst violence is between two women. And we can also read that such violence has been shown to be least between gay man couples, and the middle range of violence is heterosexual couples, and within that, a low level of violence between married husband and wife couples. So in other words, when women show up, the violence grows. That video in the top left hand corner there. That man, after trying to get away from that young lady who kept chasing him down the street, who kept hitting him. Finally, he had to hit her back. He defended himself and it was her fault. There were even more videos that I didn't have space to put into this. They included people dragging women off of men, but she'd get back and she'd still kick the eighth shade of shit out of him. But okay, what does Dr. Phil say when a woman is being violent to a man? Is he even so much as allowed to tell her to calm down, to change her behavior when she is around him? Like with this woman, who used to beat her husband with blunt instruments, ashtrays, all sorts of things, and he was frightened for his life. Yes, she thought one day she might actually kill him. When we get into it, I just want to look, can we just calm down and talk about it? And I know that in my mind that makes sense, Dr. Phil, but it's, it doesn't work. It just leads to more anger and more violence and more frustration, and it's just destroying us. Can I bring up something? Like yesterday, we went out to try to just get out of the hotel for a little bit, and our camera, the flash quit working, and she just got angry. And I, she got, then, she, then if I try to say, baby, just calm down, it's just a flash, you'll be okay. That don't help. It, that, that makes her even madder at me. And then it's just, it just grows and it grows. Okay, I've been married 34 years. Let me help you with one thing. You don't want to tell your wife to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if a woman has to change her behavior around a partner, she is experiencing domestic violence. He was in tears throughout the program, yet the predominantly female audience actually laughed when the attacking woman described how she can control her behaviour with other people she gets angry with, but not him. Yet when the sexes are reversed, when it is a man being violent to a woman, the audience are all long faces and sympathetic smiles. Yes, how sensitive they were being to the male victim, I think not. What a pair of standards to hold. Erin Pitsy spoke of how commonplace it is for domestically violent relationships to be oh, consensual, consensual so that both partners are reciprocally domestically violent. And while I cannot think of any justification for something like, oh, a man flushing a woman's head down a toilet, and yes, that did happen in the Dr. Phil example, if there were some other incident, like she were coming at you with a knife, a fist, or some other blunt instrument, then maybe you do have to hit her back if, like the video example, it's the way to stop it. Look, the moral message I have experienced throughout my life is nothing unusual. You know the one. You hear him on his own. As a man, you never hit a woman. Well, I am a man, and as a man, I have never hit a woman. And so as not to make light of what we're talking about, we are not talking about the sort of hanky-panky you see advertised in shops like Ann Summers or a similar slap and tickle where a boyfriend or a girlfriend might put their partner over their knee for a spanking for Valentine's Day. But back to the monotone quote. I wonder how many women watching this or those who watch Dr. Phil or Long Luke have indeed punched, slapped, scratched, or kicked a man. And I wonder how much of that gets reported on a serious subject of domestic abuse. Child abuse is largely caused by women, not uncommonly a female relative. Physical abuse to children, neglect to children is largely from the mothers. So the hypocrisy of campaigns such as that by Refuge is they lump children with the very group of people from which their abuse largely stems. And a consequence of bundling women with children is that the louder voice of the two, of the adult, the woman, drowns out that of the child. A famous example of this in family court disputes over such things as child custody and money pertains to that of parental alienation. This can include the child secretly being coached to lie by the mother to say such things as they are uncomfortable with the father and this may even be used to support such false suggestions the mother may make to say the father is even a risk to the child. And while it's possible for the sexes to be reversed so that the father commits parental alienation to the mother, the systemic grouping together of women and children in these campaigns with the knock-on effect in the domestic violence shelters can help bolster a one-sided story, even if domestic violence has genuinely occurred but is consensual so that both partners are reciprocally domestically violent. So enabled by this women and children only support network of campaigns, a false narrative is perpetuated 
perpetuated to brand men as the perpetrators and women as the victims. Even when domestic violence has been shown to be about half and half across the genders in some studies and very close to that in others. So this false narrative is misandry. Erin Pitsy was on the BBC television programme Counterblast. She spoke of those people truly in need, and she said they wouldn't come here unless they badly needed help. Yet one of the problems she associated with these women and children only shelters was a lack of inclusivity. So rather than working within the relationship, women will return to destructive relationships and then come back to the shelters. This can raise that one in four statistic falsely for numerous instances per individual woman. And that is a problem with these women and children only campaigns. As Erin Pitsy said, with men who are domestically violent, there are some monsters out there. And as per the video clips, the same can be said for some women. So, let us now truly consider what their intentions can include. Around the same time as Lauren's video, the British Home Office, like America's VAWA, are running their own campaign entitled Violence Against Women and Girls. And while the title of that may suggest that it does not include boys, it does include stories of domestic violence between gay men because they are grouped as same-sex couples. So the only people they don't want to talk about are straight men, unless, of course, they are the perpetrators of domestic violence. That can be young men and that can be fathers. And also, if you mix the two, there can be a correlation with young pregnancies. If we read through an NSPCC report, which at first gives the impression that domestic violence is a problem of both male on female and female on male in teens and young people. As we go through the pages, we see more emphasis is put on girls as the victims and less inclusivity for boys, the more media they generate from it. Feminists will often try to argue that campaigns like VAWA do not intend to introduce redundant law, but in fact are for the purpose of focusing more resources on the problem of violence against women, even though the problem of domestic violence has been shown to not be gender specific, and men are said to need equal focus. So we get campaigns like Refuge for women to take away children into shelters. Women and children campaigns such as those by Refuge get bolstered by campaigns such as VARWAG and acts such as VAWA. Both charities and government work hand in hand with celebrities. Yet when men are said to need equal focus, feminists will say such things as nobody is obligated to champion your cause. Yet by receiving tax funding, that's exactly what their campaign does by obligating other people to champion their cause. So take a look again at VAWA's Step Up campaign and you will remember the treatment of the disposable male, just as those shelters help the family courts treat fathers as optional extras. But most men are not violent and you are not disposable, and neither are your sons. So if you live in a part of the world where you do not have a duty to rescue, if it is a random woman, as a man, ask yourself if this suggested guidance applies to you. Remember, you are not disposable. If it is based upon misinformation, do not presuppose you have been endowed with the know-how to take for granted what is going on in that instance. Think as an individual before you take upon yourself a duty of rescue because you will never learn anything if you are not prepared to accept that you are wrong. Do not risk yourself generating or amplifying inaccurate reports. Do not make the gamble where fools rush in. Do not automatically assume a man's side of events is something to be disregarded so easily. Consider the cumulative effect of rape shield laws and a culture of false reporting. You too are a man and you too may find yourself subject to an instance of inaccurate reporting. Question a woman's part in this before you step up to the conclusion that you will be defending her. You've got two legs. You don't by default defend the woman. You just don't do it. You don't have to. There certainly are enough men out there who support VAWA, Refuge and their ilk. While some are naive or haven't really thought about it that much, there are others who see themselves as a kind of white knight in shining armour. If we look at the everyday members of the public who support these misandric campaigns in large numbers, we can remember the reaction of the audiences on Dr. Phil and those who support campaigns such as that by Refuge. Whether you are male or female, let them know that you do not support their misandric campaigns. Watch this video again for inspiration before you leave an intelligent comment. It needn't be Shakespeare. Just let them know that you know what they're up to. Because considering who embraces these campaigns so keenly, unless something changes around here, it looks like the majority of women support that. Additionally, look at all this media coverage promoting Lauren's campaign. While it may be that officially no money is spent by Refuge on this media coverage, how many people are to receive a salary from Refuge whether or not they appear in the media coverage? And also think about who is accountable for where the money goes. Where does the money go for domestic violence? Where is the audit trail? There are some good men and women in this world. A group of French women have spoken out against feminists, femen. Here is a video on the subject. With that, if you like this video and would like to see more content like this, in the meantime, for your own research purposes, take a look at these channels on which these videos are broadcast, and then we'll see what we can do.
As something else to think about, if you think about the aforementioned lack of inclusivity for men in domestic violence campaigns, consider how many other male institutions, such as universities, clubs, charities, share their resources with women by either obligation or choice. We do not mean club membership for something like golfing or tennis. We mean groups to help kids, to help parents, academia for adults. Inclusivity requires sharing, so it is not about championing the cause of a single sex in feminism's one-sided gender war. Inclusivity is about solving the problem of domestic violence on one hand but in order to get there on the other hand it's never a surprise to see them knocking down the men. Slaps. a bit of makeup can help somebody feel good about themselves but those who spend a big chunk of their time on cosmetics can seem somewhat engrossed in their appearance to the outside world that film american psycho you know the one with christian bale as the protagonist he too has such a ritual concerned with portraying a persona to people emotional psychological and financial as well basically if a woman has to change her behavior around a partner she is experiencing domestic violence in the united states of america right now their government have been pushing out the violence against women act where they work hand in hand with celebrities to tell men to man up or i mean step up where they see violence where it's against women hey everybody have you ever noticed how those campaigns led by the toiletries, cosmetic and diet industries make you want to feel bad so then you'll buy stuff? Also, it's somehow taboo to acknowledge the fact that the majority of this disproportionate adulation shout on celebrities merely for the way they look is done so by the female of the species. Am I allowed to say that? Well, if we're talking of the elephant in the room, why is it when you get companies like Dove who proclaim women to be beautiful in all shapes and sizes? They'll do so to tell us all what is and isn't violence. Specifically, domestic violence. Oh, and another thing. But only when it's women. And children. Did I know domestic violence was such a huge problem? No, I didn't. I was absolutely gobsmacked to read the statistics. One in four women are affected by it. Um, it doesn't just affect young women, it can affect teenagers too. It's not just physical abuse, it could be... Um, With whom he just wants to fit in. in. What is it with that Newcastle bird, Cheryl Cole, with an advertising career showing us all how to look good, only to end up applying a heavy shiner to a toilet attendant, simply because Cheryl felt entitled to a complimentary lollipop? So worth it. Lily Zat Fester. On the subject of girls allowed to take the law into their own hands, Lauren Luke is another Geordie bird with her fist in the cookie jar. On this occasion, Lauren's chipped in 